Welcome to the Hunter Baby Challenge, part 69. And in this episode, we're going to have some more aging up. Ocean Prince, you're real. I think that's how you really pronounce that. And Vincent. Yeah. That's who's aging up in this episode. So whenever we get around the throwing around the birthday parties, that'll be great. That would be absolutely wonderful. I just got done watching some legs. I watched um, K-Town. And... I mean... I really don't know what to say about that one. I mean... You got the people there who, who live in K-Town throwing rocks at Stan and Zoe and, and chasing them everywhere and... You got a uh, reincarnation of Mantrid, and then Stan is there running into this reincarnation of Mantrid, and it fill in the blanks of what he used to be, of who who he used to be, and what he's done in the past. And then Kai malfunctions, and then Zev and Stan figure out what's wrong with him. By moving the rods from one area to another. And then try to figure out what's wrong with them. And then they throw this. And the only way to fix Kai was to throw him off the edge of the city. And, but let it fix him. So. And then they, and then they run into Prince. So. And end that episode right there. Overall, good episode. Cause I was doing like a, like writing my version of K Town, and then I needed some references. Had to rewatch the episode to write something different. In my version, they didn't run into Mantra. <laughs> But there is a good scene between Zeb and Stan. <laughs> I ship that. Yes. <laughs> anyway, most of the stuff I write that I'm currently writing, I don't think I'll put it up. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Um, I might put the one up where Stan goes... Uh-huh. Goes to Plant Music K and ends up finding his daughter and rescues her before the Rancher drones destroy the world. I might put that one up. I got revised a little bit, but then I could put that one up. It's just a little, it's just a little short story. She's writing another Lex screenplay. Norb. <laughs> she wrote Nook and then now Norb. I'm going through the list. And I'm going to be honest. I don't get through the entire second season. <laughs> I don't even get to the third. Before the end of the series. I mean before the end of this generation. We love teenagers and kids who want advice. <laughs> I really don't care about your advice, <laughs> to be honest. I just, I just don't care. Sev's spotlight is fading. That's okay, I make her famous. I thought I did make her famous. How's her spotlight fading? I just made her famous. You know, whatever. Is she getting a headache? She got a headache, don't she? I need you to write this. Don't get a headache on me now. I need you to finish this. I don't see how she's tense from not using her phone. Well, she's just, she's just on it. Would you like to go to the... She actually takes her to the blogs. <laughs> Don't say you're going to take her one place and then take it to, to another. 
Actually, I thought she went with Zeb at that time. But no, she doesn't. She go, She does go. She does get out of the house. After she writes the story and publishes it. There we go. She publishes her book. Her next. It's actually screenplay. <laughs> now we got all these toys. I'm gonna put, she already has a lot of money. She doesn't need the money. She'll just put the toys in the toy box. I hate having my inventory cluttered. It just it annoys me. I got I got to be organized and that looks and that type of clutter is unacceptable to me. I can't stand clutter. Says someone who actually is married to a hoarder. <laughs> Not a hoarder. It was a hoarder. A slob. Yeah, I'm married to a slob. That's why I like to keep I move my computer into the living room, and it's my area I like to keep nice and clean. It's just if it's not clean, it just it just I go nuts. I mean, I, it has to be clean. I got one area, that's my area, and it's clean area. I like to keep it that way. Okay, now we're at the bluffs. We've been invited to the bluffs. To do some dancing. What's the point? There's nobody there. How can, there's nobody there. Oh, of course there's somebody at the bar. But who's doing the music? Of course, it has famous, and everybody's celebrating something. A little dance party going. Who's running the DJ booth? Zeb can't run it. I don't know why. Does she? She? You think she could use it to work on her DJ skill? But she can't really. That's pretty lame. Why can't she? Why can't she do the music herself? That doesn't make any sense. I think it was one of her sons that invited her. I think it was Damon. Yeah, Damon was the one that invited her. Is one of her daughters pregnant? Or is that her sister? And signing an autograph for him. Look at everybody passing out. <laughs> yeah, it's like you've never seen a celebrity before in your entire life. Okay, there's somebody at the booth. Cool. Let's go dance. Let's get your freak on. <laughs> Time for everybody to get their freak on. Let's do some dancing. Zap, let's do some dancing. Alright, get your freak on. Seriously? Did you just stop the music when Zeb da started dancing? Are you kidding me? Why'd you stop the music? Dude, we get it. She's a celebrity. Can celebrities dance? Oh, is that the DJ stopping the music? What's wrong with this place? Now, get some going. Get your groove on. Keep going. She's dancing. She's break dancing. Yes, yes, yes. Break. Why? Why'd you just stop? Why'd you stop music? Why? I we get it. She's a celebrity. So she can't dance because you're too stupid. Please, you're a DJ. Stop. You're supposed to be playing the music. Celebrities are allowed to dance without you. 
Dance, okay, dance. Dance, dance, dance. Sorry, stop the music one more time. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hit this guy. I'm gonna hit this DJ in the face. <laughs> Kick him in the throat. Cause, cause Ev, how is Ev supposed to dance if you keep stopping the music? You idiot DJ. I wanna, I wanna hurt you. Why? Is Zed not allowed to dance or something? Get it, she's a celebrity. Get over yourself and let her dance. For goodness sake. But was she standing around talking? It's okay. He doesn't do anything when she's standing around. He doesn't stop the music while she's just standing there and not doing it, not dancing. If she's not dancing, he still plays the music. Okay, he's not. Okay, now let's go back to dancing. Why? Is she not allowed to dance? It's only when she starts dancing. How, how is she supposed to dance if you're not playing music, dummy? Go back to playing music. Oh, I'm going to hit this DJ. Oh, I want to. I want to. I want to reach my hand to the screen and slap him. Why do you keep stopping the music? How is that that frustrated? And keep stopping the music. <laughs> I, I'm, seriously, can somebody who is capable of doing such a thing reach their hand across the screen and smack that DJ? Zev, can you do that for me? Be rude to the guy? If I were you, I would. Because seriously, that DJ can be smacked upside the head. He keeps stopping the music every time his head starts dancing. What the hell's wrong with this dude? Oh, I want to hurt this guy. I really do. It's not re- he's not a real guy, so I want to hurt him. Because <laughs> he's not real. He's just fiction. Zeb, I'm going to find out where you... You stop the music one more time while Zeb dances. Zeb will find out where you live and steal from you. I'm not going to lie. Let's start dancing. So. That's it. I think I should find out where this where this sim lives. Is that just steal from him? Because he is an idiot. Ending early because this is lame. This is totally lame. <laughs> I couldn't go through the rest of the dance party with the DJ keep stopping the music every time Zev dances. Oh, that DJ. I should really. Find out where you, that Sim lives and Zeb steals from him. Because <laughs> that's what he gets for being a pain in my butt. Now Zeb's home. She's tense. I don't think she can write a story when she's tense. But she is confident. Definitely confident. Write another screenplay. And next up says Twilight. Oh, that's when they go to Ruma. Because uh, Stan is sick. He's ill. And they take him to Ruma. Because they apparently have a 790, a 791 robot that has diagnostics that could help Stan. So, and then Kai, uh, he tells Zev and Stan... Well, he tells Zev that uh, it's a planet where they keep the former his divine shadows in a semi-living state. It affects the dead, but it doesn't affect the living. And there's only like three people living there. An ex-cleric and his wife and daughter. Um, or not. He's, he looks like a cleric, but he's like... Like a gov, he's like a governor. Oh, Then the fixing stand, but uh, Rhoda, I think he's Rhoda, right? 
by Governor Rota, but then his wife Hidia, Hidia um, decides that they should uh, oh. Oh, fix Dan and steal the wax, not realizing that they need the key to fly it. <laughs> they didn't move. And so it's like, you need the you you need the key to fly the legs. And like, yeah, like we really believe that. <laughs> and the moth gets eaten by zombies. <laughs> and then Kaiser has he's affected by the rays of the planet and he has some interesting poetry. <laughs> <laughs> and since the zombies ate the moth, they need to call the Lex to fly down to the planet and get them, right? And Stan had this, and then Kai had the only squawker to communicate with the Lex. <laughs> and then Laika happens to wake, wake up and goes down. In uh, he's 790. He's like, where's it? Like, where is everybody? He's like, oh, they went down to the planet. And she's like, what planet? It's like the that one. And she looks at the plant, the view screen. She's like, oh, that planet does not look tasty at all. <laughs> she goes down to the planet, and um, she does eat the. She does eat Lamia, and she does, and she does eat Hidia. I think she eats the body of 791. Uh, not 791, it was 792. 792. I, I, I had to correct myself. And, um, what else? Uh, when did they get, <laughs> the moth get eaten? <laughs> oh, oh, no, wait. I got to the part where Stan and Zev went looking for Kai and finds him on top of a cliff. Asking him for the squawker so they can contact the legs. <laughs> Kai throws the squawker off the cliff. <laughs> and Stan's like, you stupid dead guy. I hate you. <laughs> He's more like, I hate you. <laughs> And then Zev says, like, there's a transmission inside the tower. So they had to go back into... <laughs> they had to go pa- They had to get past the zombies to get into the tower. Get to the transmitter to, um... Contact the legs. <laughs> they do. But Zev has been bitten by a zombie. And she, she transforms into a zombie. Which is interesting. And she eats uh, the high governor's brain. And then Hidia tries to get away. Like it's better you than me to get eaten, right? Like somebody's got to feed the zombies, you know? Tries to leave Stan to die, you know? And uh, and then Laika comes in and saves the day. She eats Hidia. She rescued... She managed to... Get Kai into the moth. She came down in. And get Stan. And, and then they were like. Um, Stan was like. Oh, we can't leave without Zev. And then Zev happens to be there. They take her back to the legs. And then Kai cures her. He sucks out all the poison. And apparently Zev liked it. When uh. He sucked the poison out of her mouth. <laughs> Apparently, Zev was into that. Zev was all, looked at Kai and was like, can you do that again? Because <laughs> yeah, apparently that was some, it was like a kiss. It was some kiss, okay? <laughs> and then Zev, and then like, he's like, oh, I'm full now. I'm, I'm going to go back to sleep. And uh, first Zev was like, did I eat the high governor? And Stan's like, well, yeah, you did. Well, his brain anyway. <laughs> and like he goes, well, I ate Lomi and the mother. <laughs> and and then Stan's like, Lex. So he didn't say Lex. He's like, he's like, he says, let's blow up Ruma. 
And Kai's like, there's no one living on Ruma. It's like, and then they, and then Mantra Jones comes by and they watch, yeah, they watch Mantra Jones come by and eat the entire planet. Yeah, that's Ruma. No, well, that's episode Twilight. He's also talking about the last, the other book she wrote. Norb. She wrote Norb in the beginning. Now, Norb. Norb was the little kid from White, from the episode White Trash. He was Norb Golane. And he escaped the destruction of planet Vermal when Stan ordered the life to blow up Vermal. And he's a little kid that gets eaten by Mantern Drones and gets converted into Mantern Drones. And somehow the distress signal gets sent to the Lex saying that Norb is in... Well, he's just low on air floating in space. And then Kai goes to get Zeb and Kai... Stan, Stan goes to get Zeb and Kai to go rescue Norb from floating in space. And they bring him on the legs. And it turns out that Norb was actually just a bunch of drone arms. <laughs> and they start eating the legs. And they figure out that... Uh, they, and and they, they destroy, try to destroy 790's, 790. He has a... They find out that 790 has a brain, has brain tissue. And that... And that because without that, he wouldn't be able to fall in love with Zeb. Because that transformation ah, where you, you fall in love with the first person you see, that and 790 ended up getting that. And they figured out, because without that brain piece, that part would never have worked on 790. And they all are like, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> so, because <laughs> 790 out of the way, they wouldn't be able to figure out how to, to destroy the, the drone arms. But they managed to use a protein regenerator to try and fix, to repair 790's brain tissue. And turn back on 790 so 790 can operate the protein regenerator to repair his brain tissue. And they're all trying to figure out how to destroy the drone arms while they're eating the lax from the inside out. Um... 1790 tells, that, so they're outside in the moth, Kai, Kai, Zev, and, and Stan, they're out in the moth, they're flying around the lakes trying to figure out what to do. And, uh, they can talk, apparently they can talk to, talk to the Lex to send messages back and forth from the Lex to 790 and 790 to the Lex and to the Lex girl. So 790 can tell them. How to destroy the drone arms. Or how they work or whatever. And they figured out, well, they figured it out and said, like, but, like, if the legs reverse his polarity, the, the fry, the, all the, cir the electronic circuits on board. And so I was like, would that destroy 790? And then and Kai was like, yeah, I think Kai was like, he, he, like, well, he is electronic service, like, yeah, that would affect 790. And Stan's like, I don't think he would be destroyed because that, because he has the living tissue in it, and that part that counts. It's like, well, Kai's like, we gotta get 790 out of there if you don't want him destroyed. So we make, they make the trip back to the Lex and send Kai to get 790. As soon as they fetch 790, they get back on the moth. But Stan has trouble communicating with the Lex through the moth. And, and then says, like, is he dead? And Kai's like, no, but I don't think so. But we can't, can no longer communicate with him this way. And then Kai's like, well, his main control center is on the bridge. And it's like... And Lex is, is Stan's the only person that Lex will listen to. Because he is a captain. And Stan's like, I'm the winner. <laughs> so Stan has to get out of the mod. And Kai goes after, goes, follows him. And, uh, 
Stan gets on the bridge and tells Alex that how to destroy the drone arms by reversing his polarity. So he gives him an order, and then the and then the seven, and then all of a sudden the drone arms start. You know they know what he's up to. They're, now they're going to go after Stan and Zeb and Kai. But Kai says he stay on the Lex because the polarity wouldn't affect them. So Stan and Zeb take Zeb and I need to go outside and watch the Lex reverse his polarity, and it kills off all the drone arms. And then they get and once they get back on the Lex, they get a message from uh, Mantrid saying that um, it's, it was all. It, it was just a game he was playing with them. It's like, because it, cause, cause if I didn't like you, you'd think you'd all be destroyed by now. Because if, if it wasn't for the Lex crew, well, Kai mainly, if it wasn't for Kai, then Mantrid still wouldn't exist. So it was all thanks to Kai that Mantrid still exists. Because of the, you know, in the episode Mantrid, that Kai still had some... Uh, insect essence inside him and transferred it to the only insect and Kai I mean the man ended up getting that essence transferred into his machine down here he's rancher's part machine and part insect and has that drive to destroy the universe so Ranger says that, that the life crew will be the last to be destroyed by Manter to Jones because it's a thanks to why he still exists in the first place. Yeah, so now Ocean Prince Ocean Prince are young adults, they get to move out. And Uriel and Vincent are now teenagers. So this is great news. This is wonderful news. So is everything eaten up? There's still some cake left. You know, this is why I, why I only cook make a cake in a in, in a platter. That serves 16 people. Not everybody eats. But and when people do, there ends up not being enough. But it's kind of like you snooze, you lose situation. But I, I got to make sure. The kids kids got to eat first. Especially the toddlers. When, there's to, when I have toddlers, when I throw a party, I, I, I got to make sure the toddlers had got something. Toddlers get fed first. Because, you know, they're... Sometimes they could be helpless at, at some, uh, you know, like, you got to feed them. They don't know how to feed themselves. You got to make sure they're, they're being taken care of. So I always, I know they can reach up to the table, reach up to the counter and grab a serving for themselves, but I got to make sure they did. Mm, this, this toddlers get, gets first come first, I know the first come first or basis. But I gotta make sure the kid, the, the, especially the toddlers got something they eat. And the kids get something they eat. <laughs> now in the next episode, um, Ocean Prince has moved out and, and uh, Zeb gets to hook up with the next baby daddy. Ooh. Very interesting. <laughs> You'll never believe who. <laughs> Such spoilers. I'm going to say it. Stanley, 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 Stanley. I like Stanley. He's one of my favorite characters in life. I like, I like Stan's dad, Zeb, and Kai. I like both subs. I treat them both equally. I favor them both equally, especially in this challenge. You get one Ze Zeb for gen like I can use one Zev in one generation, a second Zev in another generation, <laughs> and then repeat the process. 
And I'm also going to go through the 200 baby challenge. Yes, I decided that. Anyway, this is the end of this episode, so stay tuned for part 70. Like, subscribe if you ever want to see more content.